So in our last video, we talked about the Earth and its eight layers, and we also talked about it as a very active inner system, which is generated by that pressure of the gravity, which is creating a very hot inner core, surrounded by a liquid outer core, and this liquid is in constant motion, and transferring heat to the mantle, which moves also by convection, which then causes the asthenosphere, the plastic asthenosphere, to move, and carrying with it the, the brittle lithosphere and plates against each other. And that's basically what's going to be causing the plate tectonics we're going to be talking about in this chapter. And one thing that I wanted to talk about before I got to that point is the idea of all of the different things which are created within the Earth system because of the internal energy of the Earth. Gravity will also cause, of course, uh, things to fall towards the Earth. And so uh, celestial objects hitting the Earth, um, water falling from the sky, and you can think about the water cycle and everything else that's affected by that. The presence of the atmosphere staying on the Earth. All of these things are caused by Earth's own energy of gravity. But there's Earth's energy goes beyond that. Think about all of the geological processes that happen on Earth. All of these geological processes are basically generated by the Earth's own internal energy of the constant motion of the core and the heat of the pressure of gravity that's causing this, this motion. Now, one of the most important things that is created by this system is mag Earth's magnetism. We talked about this when we talked about space and the origin of the Earth. And because of the magma that's flowing in the core, so the magma that's going to be flowing around in circles in the outer core, around the metal inner core, you, you create an electromagnetic field that surrounds the planet of the Earth. And scientists think that the origin of the field comes from the rotation of the magma in the inner core. So imagine the Earth as an egg that has a liquid core on the inside. And the way the outside is, is rotating or wobbling or doing whatever the movements of the Earth do doesn't necessarily match the way the inside is rotating in the core and the way the lava is flowing around in circles. And so when you get that, you're also going to get a basically an electromagnetic field that's rotating around the Earth. Now, this field will have a north and a south pole. And you guys you know, the, the, the north end of the compass points towards the south end of the field which means the South Pole would be somewhere in the North Geographic Pole. So we talked about this. If you, if you were to look at the wobble and you see the actual pole of the Earth geographically, it would be something like that. And you, we call this the South Pole and this the Geographic North Pole. But since the compass is going to be pointing that way, the, point, the compass is going to point to the North Pole, that means that the magnetic field lines will actually leave from the bottom and go towards the top. That's the river of electromagnetic field that is being followed by the compass needle and therefore how it points. Another thing that we learned when we did space is the idea that the magnetic field of the Earth, the magnetic poles, are not necessarily lined up with the geographic poles. That the magnetic north is actually at the south, and the magnetic south is actually at the north. And then you have these magnetic field lines extending from north to south pole, like that, all around the world, and you're going to get basically a magnetic field pattern. And that's why the compass points north, because it's following this river of particles, which or the energy river that flows from south, from north to south. Now remember that the north, magnetic north has to be in the bottom, because the north end of the, of the needle has to point to the south end of the, of the magnetic field of the Earth, because opposites attract, which means the south magnetic pole is actually at the north geographic pole. But they're not exactly in the same spot, because the poles are not aligned. And they're not aligned because the way the Earth rotates has nothing to do with the way that the core rotates. Since they're, they're not the same material, the Earth is mostly solid, but the core is mostly liquid, the outer core is moving not in exactly the same way as the Earth is rotating. And even the way the Earth wobbles is not necessarily the same way that the core wobbles. And so you have this disjunction or this disconnect between the position of the actual geographic north or the axis of rotation of the Earth and the actual axis of the magnetic field of the Earth or the magnetosphere of the Earth. Now that explains a lot and it explains why when you actually go towards the north pole of the compass, you don't actually get the geographic north. So, uh, people will soon realize that the north star, which sits right on top of the, of the geographic north, was not necessarily pointing the same way the compass was pointing. And eventually, when the explorers actually reached the geographic North Pole, they realized they were not at the magnetic North Pole, and that there were two distinctive things. And 
We also talk about the fact that when you look at the magnetic field of the Earth, one side of it is pushed in while the other side is stretched out. And you see that happening in this picture there. And that happens because of the solar winds or the geomagnetic storms leaving from the suns, massive ejections of matter streaming across the solar system. Things which would destroy life on Earth and all the Earth's atmosphere if it wasn't for the magnetic field of the Earth. So this magnetic field of the Earth, the fact that we have an active outer core and inner core is very important for the Earth. The fact that we, this Earth is not solid on the inside the way that Mercury and Mars already are makes the Earth geologically active, which creates a magnetic field strong enough to deflect the solar winds around the Earth, per, almost like the magnetic field creates a shield around the Earth. And we know this happens because as particles from the solar wind stream towards the Earth, they interact with the Earth's magnetosphere and hit the atmosphere at the thermosphere level in a region that we call the plasma sphere or the ionosphere. And we actually create, create those aurora borealis and that are basically particles from the sun streaking and hitting the electromagnetic field of the Earth and creating this light show of burning particles as they hit the atmosphere. And most, but most of the particles are actually deflected around the earth because of the magnetic field of the earth and that is how the earth is allowed to have its own atmosphere and be protected from the solar wind so it's definitely very important now two more things which are going to be important about the magnetic field of the earth that you need to know for this chapter is the idea that the magnetic field is not a constant thing and that because the earth is wobbling and rotating in ways which not necessarily match the way the core is rotating the poles are not going to be always be aligned and not only that the rotation speed and the wobbling speed do not match the inner speed, making the poles shift or change throughout the years. In, these, in 1610, the poles were located in this area of Greenland. But over the last 400 years, the poles has, little by little, traveled a bit from its position. And by now, almost 400 years later, it is not at all near what it was, used to be. It's traveled several kilo, hundreds of kilometers away from the original pole position which tells you that the poles are actually traveling as because the earth is wobbling while the poles are not so it, what happens what happens is that it makes the the um, magnetic pole pretty much stay pretty much the same while the earth is actually wobbling and so that creates the position of the of magnetic field to be changing in, in relationship to the actual position of the earth now another thing that's interesting is that normally you have this very clear cut pattern as you see here that's how you have today but that during a magnetic pole reversal, the magnetic field actually disorganizes and it looks a little more like this. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by reversal? Remember that the magma is flowing on the inside because of, of a convection cell, almost like a lava lamp. that You've seen them before, I'm sure. This lava lamp flows, uh, heats up on the bottom, picks up energy, goes to the top by convection, cools down when it gets to the top, and, go, and sinks down, heats up again, the cycle restarts. So because of density differences caused by differential heating, the lava lamp continues to circulate over and over again. But as you watch the circulation of the lava lamp, it's not going to be exactly the same thing every time. Every time the circulation happens, it's slightly different. And if you watch it for a very long time, you might notice that after a while, it actually might turn in the opposite direction that it used to be turning before. And the core is exactly the same way. It will fluctuate the same way for thousands of years, but every 100,000 years to 200,000 years or so, the, or... Sometimes there will be a million years in between each, each event. But every, ever so often, the magma flow switches direction. So let's say, for example, the magma was flowing like this in a, in a, in a certain pattern. It could be that if a, thousand, a few thousand years later, it will, it will start flowing backwards on the opposite pattern. And then when that happens, the poles will actually reverse, which means the current magnetic north, which is in the south, would flip to the north. And then that would make the compasses start pointing the opposite direction. Birds that use magnetic orientation to be lost and the magnetic field of the Earth will suddenly destabilize in doing the reversal. And instead of having the organized butterfly pattern that you see in these pictures, you have some jumbled mass that would look something more like that. And then eventually that would restabilize and have a completely opposite field where the, where the south pole will be in the north and the north pole will be in the south in terms of magnetic field. Of course, the geographic poles wouldn't change, but the way the compass would change, points would definitely change. And so, imagine the Earth as this very active inner thing that actually has several things that affect the Earth system. One of the most important things is the Earth magnetism caused by the motion of the charged particles on the outer core flowing magma, which create a shifting 
magnetic pole that ever so, ever thousand years or so, ever hundred thousand years or so, actually reverses polarity completely. But because of the differential between the wobble and the rotation, this pole actually travels across the surface of the Earth over the periods of hundreds of years as well, even if you don't count the reversal thing. All right. Other things which are caused by the Earth's inner energy we're going to talk about in future chapters some of these things are plate tectonics we're talking about this chapter the way the plates move in relation to each other it's caused by the earth's inner, inner, inner energy also the movement of the plates themselves um, either away from a, from a ridge or subducting when they collide each, against each other it's all caused because of the patterns in the in the mantle and we're going to be talking about this in more detail later too but you can see that you're going to have divergent zones where the magma is flowing away from itself in convergent zones where magma is flowing towards itself. And so that, that's going to create different kinds of boundaries in the surface of the Earth. You also have bending or stretching or folding or shearing of the surface of the Earth or because of all the plate tectonics rubbing against each other. Also, whenever the magma gets more intense or more, or more, in, more, in, more energy, the buoyancy force of the magma increases and then it pushes the crust up, bulging the crust up. And that's what creates things like seamounts, for example. But if the opposite happens, if the magma cools down, or if the amount of mass that's sitting on top of the crust increases, the opposite will happen, and the crust will shift downwards and actually bulge down, call it depression. And you also have things like earthquakes, which are caused both by this motion of the plates and by the friction when the plates hit each other and get caught. And eventually it causes the rock to bend beyond the point that it can take, and it actually will crack and rebound to normal and generate an earthquake motion. And you can see... That's definitely something that happens because of the internal layers of the Earth. You have volcanoes, which are caused by the pressure of the inner core, try, and all them lava and magma trying to escape through the surface of the Earth using the cracks in the Earth's lithosphere to get through. You have volcanism. Everything has everything to do with the plate tectonics as well, but it comes from the energy of the inside of the Earth. You also have things like erosion or weathering caused by tectonic plate motion. Rocks actually crack, bend, and change metamorphize into different kinds of rock because of the way the earth moves. It causes mountains to shear, mountains to fall apart, landslides, and all other kinds of things which will actually change the, the way the rocks look like, all because of tectonic plate action. You are, all right? So during this chapter, we're going to be talking about all of these things which are caused by the earth's internal temp temperatures, caused by gravity. And earth is an active system. Earth's own gravity creates things like pre precipitation. It creates things like um, objects falling towards the Earth from space, plate tectonics, deformations of the crust, bending, shearing, breaking of the crust, uh, earthquakes, volcanoes, erosion, and the magnetic field of the Earth. Imagine the Earth as a very active system caused by all of these things. All right? On the next video, we're going to talk about seafloor spreading, which you'll see in the screen, and how this was the missing mechanism for Wagner's continental drift theory.